Hey guys, Schuster 5000 here. Uh, I got the 314 frame all done up here. I got the engine hanging. Uh, I'm about to drop it in here soon. I want to go over a couple things before I uh, do that. Um, basically, just putting the thing back together now. Got the rims painted. Uh, I got my tires cleaned up. Gonna go upstairs. Got the green parts up here. Fenders look pretty good. The hood looks pretty good. It's all original decals. Uh, I do need one decal for the key switch. Uh, that one was just too covered in paint. Couldn't save it. There's the dash tower. There's my seat. I'm kind of a Frankenstein seat. I sewed the uh, cracks up um, best I could and painted it. Doesn't look that bad, actually. But uh, there's the side panels over there in the 300. There's a wheel horse. You gotta work on that. There's 1650 Cubs here. 1100s here. Here's the 110. I gotta get some videos on this. I haven't done much with it lately. Uh, air compressor's all set up, ready to go. I'll do a video on that sometime here. But I'm trying to get this 314 done. So, anyway. Um, this dash. You got uh, pretty much everything's painted. I just got to uh, assemble it and some new bolts here and there and whatnot. Um, one thing I wanted to go over is air gap on the PTO. Grab my feeler gauge. Um, if you don't take care of your electric PTOs, um, you can have issues and it can cost you big dollars. Um, I think just a magnet for this is about a buck fifty to two hundred dollars. And uh, you, if you want to try and avoid that, uh, just uh, make sure your PTO stays clean and the magnet um, and all everything's gapped good and so on. Um, it doesn't take too much to really pull all this off. Just inspect it. You pull off this bolt here, and this is a uh, like a bushing or a sleeve, and you pull that out, and then you loosen your four nuts here, and there's springs behind them, and that's a break on the armature. And you pull all that off and you should be able to get right to your magnet. Um, it's another way to also get to your front oil seal if that ever does blow. Which that has happened on one of my John Deere's. It was my grandfather's 300. It's the only one that ever had an issue. But I want to go over a PTO gap. I got my feeler gauge. I got 18 thousandths feeler ga uh, gauge gap. And what you're going to want to do is put it in this slot right here. There's a little slot here. And uh, you want to fish your way through between the armature and the rotor or the magnet. Of course now the engine's gonna wanna spin being up in the air. Um, trying to, and what you wanna do, let's get that, hold on, let me get it started here. There we go. All right, now I got my uh, feeler gauge in between the uh, rotor and the armature here. And uh, you want this to be snug. It's just like doing points. Um, I know points are 20, 20 thousandths, uh, 18. <clears throat> I would probably use 18 if I didn't have a 20 on this. Um, you want it to be snug. You want to be able to get it in there too. I think I'm only going to be able to get one just because I don't have enough hands here. I got that one. Um, and you need to adjust that by tightening these nuts in and out. Um, if you do it, if you have too big of a gap, the PTO will be working too hard, and uh, it'll probably end up um, blowing a fuse or something. Or on the John Deere's, they have circuit breakers, so the circuit breaker would actually blow on a. Uh, and if the uh, if it's too tight, you're gonna have overheating issues, and you're actually gonna fry your magnet. So that's why you want to check this gap, check it at all four sides here. And uh, that's how you would check that out. Um, if you take your magnet off underneath this and your bake light is fried, but the magnet is still good and it doesn't have a, a shorting issue or anything, you can actually chip off the top layer of bake light and then just re-epoxy it. Um, I've done that with JB Weld. It works pretty good. Um, and that's another way to save your magnet if it's still got a good, you know, magnetism and it doesn't have issues uh, It's not shorted out or burned up or anything um, 
and you can check that by just clamping a uh, like a battery pack to the base and one to your uh, power wire here you just take this ground this out and maybe and ground to the clamp here um, and then you know check your uh, check your magnet with a screwdriver see if it sticks and whatnot and if it stays on there good then the magnet's still good um, and you can check that all by doing that I think I got a video on that as well for my 300 um, I wanted to go over that with you guys anyways and uh, show you the progress it's looking pretty good um, I had to repaint this just chrome was shot it was all peeled uh, this is chrome paint rust oleum chrome paint actually looks pretty good that's surprising I didn't think it was gonna come out as good as that but uh, oh well so I'm gonna drop this engine in um, I'm gonna hook up my wires and probably run a new gas line uh, I've switched to this clear gas line. It's actual gas line. It's not vacuum line or anything. Um, I've had numerous issues of trying to find a clog. And at least with this being clear, <clears throat> if you got a bunch of crap in there, you'll be able to see. Or if the gas is dirty, it'll be, you know, a, a different color. It'll be yellow or orange. And uh, it just makes it easier to see if there's an issue. Um, I know on these especially there, you get a long gas line up to the fuel pump on the front of the engine and to at least you be able to look through the frame and see where the issue is versus uh, you put in regular black gas line in there you won't be able to see it um, so that's why I'm switching to clear <clears throat> I've done that in the last couple tractors but not the entire system just like little short pieces and uh, I did this on this engine as well I ran a little piece short clear piece from the fuel pump up to the carburetor and I will be putting a inline filter in the frame on an easy to get to spot that way if you ever have to change it you can and uh, there shouldn't be as many issues here but uh, anyway got this thing hanging here I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in and uh, start getting this thing back together and I'll get a video of when I get some more of this done um, <clears throat> not sure how much I'm going to get done. I'd rather get the uh, wheels on before I get too, too far. But, uh, as long as my jack stands are holding it all in, I can keep going. So, um, I'm going to wait on the tubes to do my tires. Uh, I'm not going to buy new tires when the, these tires are actually pretty nice. Um, so, we'll see you guys in another video. So, see you later.